we're going to be talking about the pituitary gland. It has two major regions and then a minor third region. We're going to talk about the anterior pituitary gland, sometimes called the anterior lobe, and then also the posterior pituitary and also called the posterior lobe. And then for some animals, not our main animals, but some animals have an intermediate lobe that does certain things, but not in our main dog, cat, and horses. I'm going to show you now a horse brain. I'll enlarge it a little bit. On the left side, of course, is the entire brain in that person's hand. And of course, this would be then the right hemisphere of the brain, the horse. This would be the left hemisphere. This would be rostral. Caudal is back here. And then we'll enlarge it a little bit to show you the person has the pituitary gland in the other hand, which is neat. And it's kind of very good to show that the pituitary gland is connected by what's called the pituitary stalk to the hypothalamus, which would be up here if we looked at the complete specimen. So now we're going to bring out another brain slice. Rostral is to the right, caudal is to the left. And I just want to show another view of the pituitary gland here, which has been nicely taken out of the skull. And in this picture, I know this happens to be a sheep picture from a sheep, and that's okay because they're all very similar. But here we have the hypothalamus, and then that pituitary stalk. And then we have portal vessels, which we have talked about before. And then the anterior pituitary, which is completely like an endocrine gland. And then the posterior pituitary gland is protruding, <clears throat> excuse me, from the bottom of the anterior pituitary because the anterior pituitary gland in this case surrounds the posterior pituitary gland. So here we're going to have an artist draw us these two lobes. And I want to explain a little bit about what this figure shows. Let's go to the right side of the screen, the anterior lobe. Well, lo and behold, the pituitary gland can be called the hypophysis, just the H there, hypophysis. Adeno hypophysis. Adeno is a prefix that means gland. So this anterior lobe can be called the adenohypophysis, which is the pure endocrine part of the anterior pituitary. Again, if you remember, the neurosecretory cells are in the hypothalamus. They would release their hormone at the end of the axon here still up in the hypothalamus and those factors releasing factors releasing hormones would go into the portal vessels travel down to the endocrine cells that are located in the anterior lobe those endocrine cells then would release an additional hormone and would go into the systemic circulation Contrast that with the pituitary, the posterior lobe, I should say, and it's called the neural hypophysis because it's completely neural tissue. The neural secretory cell has a longer axon that goes all the way down to the posterior lobe, and it would release its hormone from the end of the axon into a blood vessel like I'm showing here with the laser pointer. And then those hormones, you might call them neurohormones, would go down 
and affect the systemic circulation and travel to their target tissue. There are many great illustrations of where those hormones go. Let's look at this. I'll show the top of the diagram first. Okay, well, first of all, hopefully you know all those acronyms and the full names. That's here. Well, in the hypothalamus, we have two different kinds of neural cells, neurons, if you will, that travel and extend themselves all the way to the posterior pituitary gland. And let me move that up a little bit. Those cells release antidiuretic hormone and oxytocin. And you can see the target tissues over here. Now, the anterior lobe is affected by releasing factors that come in the blood. And then that would be more on the left side of the screen where you have ACTH, TSH, growth hormone, prolactin, FSH, and LH, and then the intermediate lobe for those animals, especially maybe not our companion animals, but other animals, MSH stimulate, stimulating the melanocytes. Okay, now we have another graphic that just shows the anterior pituitary hormones and where they go. And of course, you have the pause button, but basically there's prolactin that comes out, growth hormone, some of the growth hormone goes to the liver, some of the growth hormone goes to tissue directly, thyroid stimulating hormone, adrenal corticotropin here, and then the gonadotropins, that's two hormones, LH, luteinizing hormone, and then FSH. You've got the pause button. And here, I just want to show another diagram of the pituitary hormones. Again, the more diagrams you look at, the more you understand all this stuff. Although it's a little fuzzy, here's the anterior pituitary and the posterior, posterior pituitary. The posterior pituitary has really two, antidiuretic hormone and oxytocin. And then here's that hormone we don't talk much from the intermediate lobe, the melanocyte stimulating hormone. We don't really talk about it in companion animals and f as far as our dogs, cats, and horses. And then these other hormones are from the anterior pituitary hormone. You've got the pause button, and I am going to be ending right here.